Hello, everyone. Bill Wilson, senior editor of Supermarket News, with another episode of Supermarket News Off the Shelf. And today we are talking about store digitizing. And with us today is Arsen Avakian. He is the CEO of Cooler Screens. Arsen, thanks for joining us today. Hey, great to be here with you. So, in your best guesstimate, how many grocery stores are taking advantage of digitizing? Is this just a beginning of a trend here or a movement, or has this already encapsulated the marketplace? Oh boy, that's a that's a tough question uh, to uh, estimate, right? But I would say all of the big big boys they are gonna jump into right now, investing and reinvesting into their stores, right? As they came to a conclusion uh, through the data and facts, uh, uh, most of physical stores are still most of trade is still happening in physical stores. So, and for many years we were all worried about Amazon eating the world and stores shutting down. So probably a lot of stores are underinvested in tech and uh, digital has become uh, such a prevalent part of what we as consumers, shoppers are looking for. So, so I would say all of the big companies are in it, are in the race. Uh, they're all finding a different way of coming at that. Smaller guys uh, and independents are going to follow uh, as the retail tech uh, people mature in their offerings. But I would say it's just inevitable uh, uh, not a trend. It's inevitable uh, uh, movement that will end up modernizing the retail. So just what, maybe you can tell us what digitizing is and maybe give uh, an example or two. And then if you could say what what advantages are grocers seeing with this type of technology? Uh, you know, uh, it's also a big question, right? Because it's like all the big buzzwords are flying in every corporate website. You go digital transformation, digital this, digital that, right? So it, it all makes sense. I think historically, uh, retail uh, uh, has been uh, maybe a follower of technology in, in terms of adopting it and embracing it. Because we're, as grocers or as retailers, right, we're used to good old ways of thinking about it. We get the best real estate box. We, we built as merchants a great experience we believe with good products uh, and then the uh, customer service that follows to create the stickiness for the shoppers to keep coming back a lot of that got disrupted obviously because online took that uh, monopoly of real estate uh, advantage out of the way right we we no longer are uh, as secure as we used to be uh, about our physical footprint and then two, uh, the headwinds of whether now it's inflation or the labor costs going through the roof, as well as the aging fleet of other physical assets, right? The golden age of the retail blowing up all over the country uh, is not happening anymore. Now it's a very large footprint of physical stores that need to uh, not just modernize themselves, but they need to kind of get shored up so that uh, those stores uh, keep on delivering on that margin expectation, which is already to begin with is very slim. So uh, I think the tech landscape, retail tech landscape, uh, first leaned on, uh, let me come and try to save you money. Uh, I'll save you pennies on labor or on inventory, uh, robots crawling up and down the aisles, right? Or backend systems. I think it's slow, uh, slowly and surely started to uh, last few years uh, also uh, uh, bleed into and become, the, I think, the next big frontier for retail tech uh, technologies that are not just there to save people money, but also to make money, right? Increase revenue. And that's where, like my company, Cooler Screens, right? We believe in that uh, there is definitely an opportunity to turn your uh asset base of stores into retail media application, into digital merchandising application that both pleases the shoppers with new experience, but also is able to create a mousetrap, if you will, or, or an ability to have the product companies, the vendors, to start investing some of their marketing budgets towards the retailers, not just on the traditional Googles and Facebooks of the world or billboards, but actually invest back in their customers, their retail stores. So I think the gamut runs from, I'll save you money on labor, inventory, and so on, all the way to a modern way of thinking, how do I adopt e-commerce-like 
capabilities, retail media capabilities to start making more money out of the existing boxes. So where do you see this technology in five years? Do you see complete penetration in five years? It's going to be everywhere at every store? Well, I think omnichannel experience is inevitable. Uh, when we think, at least again, in my company, we think of this through the sh uh, path to purchase, right? The shopper experience, whether it's in a gas station or grocery store or any environment, you, you, you can have your research done online. You can be looking up as simple as a location of my store, the address, or you could be building your shopping list before you visit your local Kroger. Uh, but we have also learned, right, that even during the pandemic of uh, COVID rushing people to go and shop all, all online, uh, most people still prefer to go to a physical store. And, and now even more so because they want to pick their tomatoes and bananas. They also like the social element of being in a physical store and the convenience of it. Uh, and not to say that also who wants to pay 25% extra for the delivery fee, right? That's somehow uh, baked into the price. So I think uh, I think until uh, teleportation or anything like that is invented, physical stores are going to be around. And we as uh, people, shoppers, have gotten accustomed to so many cool things that online e-commerce uh, has taught us. And we're going to be looking for that kind of capability and experience in the stores, whether I, I want to know about the nutritional facts about what I buy or about the, uh, all the coupons and the deals and promotions that are running in the store so I can save a buck or two, uh, which has always been important, good economy or bad economy, or it's going to be uh, anything that helps me even make better decisions about my health choices what's the difference between advil and Elif? the flood of all the vitamins on the on the shelves like and so on right so i think the e-commerce digital shelf has been solving that very successfully the 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 par the kind of the paradox of choice with the decision uh, being empowered with the information access transparency and so on that's all we, what we call digital merchandising i think all of that is going to make its way into physical shelves in one way or the other. And I think uh, the, the the days of the plastic paper, analog signage paper marketing in the stores are counted. Now there is a adoption curve and there is capital that's gonna be required, all those things, right? Complexity to overcome. But I think it's uh, eventually, I can't be a futurist tell you it's gonna take five years or 10 years, you know, with retail things do take longer than in other industries. But it's, I think that uh, uh, digital merchandising and retail media is inevitable. And uh, I know that the big boys are all leaning in. So as it stands now, how are shoppers um, reacting to this digitizing? How are they interacting with it as a, as a, as a technology stands right now? I think the proof point is in uh, data, right? It's like we all have anecdotal views, opinions, because that's kind of in retail what I love and also what's always so difficult. It's emotional. People have opinions and ideas, and uh, and that's awesome. That that's what uh, it really means to be diverse as humans, uh, and we respect that, right? But at the same time, the data speaks uh, volumes. Uh, at least again, in my experiences with the technology we developed and we rolled out in many places across the country and many different formats. We're seeing uh, NPS scores uh, in the 90 plus per percent of, uh, we call it consumer satisfaction scores being positive. There is always a 5% of folks that will, you know, they still want the carriages with horses on a car uh, versus cars on the roads. And, and there's and an iPhone was hated back in the day, right? So um, I'm, I'm, we can't win everybody over. But I, I would right. say like a predominant majority of people, uh, one, they say they like it. And then two, they would with their uh, dollars. So in average incremental sales lifts that you would expect from embracing retail media and digital merchandising tech uh, should be anywhere between a three to 5% incremental same store sales. I mean, you know what that means. It can be transformational for retailers that are living on a slim margin, every extra product sold because the basket conversion became more efficient, informed by the data, 
uh, that tells what content to show and when and where and who and how, right? Uh, so, so, so I'd say that the reception to five years we're in the market with my company, it's a road ahead. It's a patient road, but uh, the data is pointing that the gravity forces are the speaking uh, with the data of sales lifts, advertising revenue check that the retailers get and the consumer saying, hey, I'm actually liking that better because I now know if I'm a gluten-free product a person and I now find that cauliflower crust pizza easier in the store, you just made my shopping better, faster, more convenient. So these benefits, these features of digitizing, if you can uh, paint a picture of how they will look when they have reached their maximum potential. I mean, are we talking about, you know, these things actually interacting um, verbally with customers? I mean, if you could, like, this is, if you can paint your biggest, grandest picture of this technology, what would it look like? So there is an extreme of, take that minority report movie, right? There is the extreme, highly personalized. Yeah, I walk into my Gap store or whatever store and I'm being greeted and then I'm shown the products and information that's highly personalized and relevant to me, right? So that's like the extreme version of it. But we all learned that we live in a society where privacy and ethical considerations that come with that are, and, and now legal also constraints that come with that, that's not the future that's gonna be. Which leads to me, uh, I believe that the future is about contextually relevant uh, experiences and information in the stores that's enabled by the power of e-commerce like software, technologies, uh, that's enabled by analytics behind the scenes that are really thinking about what content to show, where and to who. I think there will be different ways of that manifesting itself whether it's through the active engagements, like maybe voice assistance in the store, you and you can speak to people. I, I mean, again, no, no secret. We don't have enough people maybe in this country, and we don't, uh, we can't fill those jobs in the retail easily. So there, uh, or digital assistance with some of the even the recent uh, developments in gen generative AI, right? They're going to make their way uh, to facilitate that shopping experience and maybe plug the hole, right? Left by the lack of either humans that want to work in that environment or don't get paid enough and they're doing other higher value added work. So uh, so I think uh, it will manifest itself both through visual digital experiences in stores, but again, you can't overwhelm the shopper. It has to be done with the precision of where do you want to activate this points of interaction and engagement, which is why, like I said earlier, I think of it as a path to purchase. It starts from the moment you open your phone and you're maybe looking up the location or doing building your shopping list to go to your local Kroger. From the moment you walk in, from what greets you to the end caps, to the perimeter, to the checkout lanes. But that's a physical part of it. What I think the secret sauce of what it will be, it's what you do with the unique data signals that you have in a detail box and how those retail data signals can guide what content, what interaction is actually contextually relevant. And that's sophisticated tech, that's AI. Sounds complicated, but on a surface to a human, it's gonna be incredibly simple, incredibly uh, intuitive and helpful. And if you keep it simple to a shopper, make it helpful, and that results in a conversion of a I, I, I was going to spend 50 bucks, but now I spent 60 bucks. That extra 10 bucks is going to make a big difference on a bottom line and a top line of a retailer. And that's why a retailer is going to adopt the tech uh, of the uh, digital merchandising and retail media. All right. Arsene Avakian, CEO of Cooler Screens. Thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.